Hi guys, GoFries here, and with me is David. David, why don't you introduce Hi, yourself? Hi, I'm David McAfee. I right. uh, run the product management team at AMD, yeah. responsible for Ryzen, Ryzen Mobile, and Ryzen Threadripper products. Okay, <laughs> great to have you here, David. Yeah. So, um, remember, just last week I asked you guys what questions you want to ask. So, some of them, they, these, these are what they have in ah, question in mind. So, does AMD have plans to overtake Nvidia in the top end graphics card for the game gamers market? Well, I'm I'm not the graphics expert. Okay. Um, you know, there's uh, there's another AMD or here. We may want to talk to him about that. Yes. But How about why don't you oh, join Simon, us? Simon, you want to join us? <laughs> Simon, come in. Right. Hi there. So Simon is the bring up the chair, oh, Simon yeah. from RTG. Come on in. Right, Simon just is just so happen to be available here. So Simon, this question is for you then. Does AMD have plans to overtake Nvidia yeah. <laughs> in the top end graphics cards for gamers market like the 2080 Ti level and such? Yeah, so um, again, while I'm not able to comment on future products, what I will say is that with the RX 5700 XT and RX 5700, we're very excited about bringing gaming, uh, we're bringing high performance to gamers that can uh, achieve great 440p performance. And while I can, what I can say at this point is our DNA is designed to be a scalable forward-looking architecture. So I would say stay tuned. We definitely have things in the pipeline to make sure that we have great products available for all end users, but I can't speak more than that today. Okay, next question. Um, why the hell does Radeon Overlay not have CPU temperature? <laughs> you know what? That's a good question. Uh, I don't have the answer to that, but I think that's something we should definitely uh, take into consideration yeah, as well. Yeah, it's a unified thing, right? Yeah. To monitor. Yeah, yeah, that's something my colleague and I can work on. We want to make sure we listen to the end user. So okay. we this one might be for David. How XFR skills given the load, given the load on different amount of cores and boost scenarios along with that? For which processors? Any, I mean, how does Any. XFR scale okay. uh, given the load on the various cores? Yeah, it, the way to think about XFR is XFR is really the maximum frequency that a, a processor can achieve. And so what you'll see is XFR typically is, is the, the max frequency at a certain temperature for the processor. And so depending on the cooling solution that you have, the motherboard that you have, uh, you'll see the processor scale better and have better residency to the higher frequencies within the processor. We, we've seen that an awful lot, both on second and third gen Ryzen processors. That you know, if you invest in a a better air cooler or a liquid cooler on the processor, you'll get better residency to the higher XFR frequencies on the platform, and it'll allow you to to see better performance overall. Okay, great. Next question is for Simon. Mm -hmm. So, how does uh, Navi Navi's anti lag work? We have some details with it. Yeah, so I'll see what I can share um, with what I can say. So, it works by essentially looking into our frame queue to ensure that we have that uh, quick responsiveness. So part of the Radeon anti-lag feature does involve looking at how we actually process frames, what frames in the queue, and ensure that that queue is um, perhaps cleared and made more efficient so that the end user on clicking a mouse gets that uh, input right into the game and that response is faster. So. Um, I don't know if I can say much more beyond that, but okay. that is part of our, our, our secret okay. sauce, I guess. I, I guess that would be good for them. <laughs> and then, next one, possibly any upcoming lower tier parts for like the Navi? <laughs> Again, um, I guess I would people say, are so interested <laughs> in all this. Yeah. I'd, I'd say stay tuned. Stay tuned. Um, okay. you know, the, again, I keep going back to the fact that the RD and architecture is built for scalability, and uh, we want to make sure that we have gaming products available for everyone. Alright, next. Um, how will AMD's approach towards ray tracing be? Will it be software or hardware focused? Yeah, I get asked that as well. So um, right now, if you look at the ray tracing ecosystem, we think that the uh, approach that perhaps um, someone else is taking is perhaps not the right approach for um, power ray tracing. If you look at the overall game support list out there today, um, I could probably count them on my hand and the single hand. Yeah, um, we believe that there is a time and place for power ray tracing, and uh, we've actually publicly announced that we will be supporting that in the near future. What I will say is that with the RGA architecture now made available um, in both the next generation of game consoles, we're very excited to work with game developers to introduce um, ray tracing into games that can do so without perhaps crippling performance. Right? We want to make sure that as a 
cool point for AMD is that we work with game developers to provide ray tracing for everyone that you can actually achieve with playable frame rates and experience and enjoy that overall ray tracing experience. So with that, can I say those who bought the yeah, 5700 series, they may still get software ray tracing if ever? I would say yes, stay tuned for stay more tuned. ray tracing yeah. opportunities <laughs> like games right. right now, but uh, we will have some things coming up. Okay, on. next one is for you. All right, we'll, on, will Thread Reaper series continue? Not just a 64 core, most people can't afford right. that, it's supposed to come out, so on. And yeah. Will Thread Ripper continue? Absolutely. Yes. yes. Okay. I think we are, we are completely committed to the Threadripper family. We want to see uh, many of the benefits that we've talked about with third gen Ryzen carry over into the Threadripper products as well. So that's another one where uh, you've got to stay tuned. More great things More to come great on things Threadripper. Come. All right, AMD. <laughs> and how will the 3950X platform deal with like four sticks of RAM compared to what, what this person was referring to, like the, the RAM speed? Mm -hmm. When you run more than two sticks, you tend to be unable sure, to hit the higher sure. speed. Well, it, that's, that's a really good question. I think one of the things that we've done with third generation Ryzen is it is a completely new architecture compared to our second and first gen Ryzen processors. So we have a dedicated I.O. die and all of the memory traffic routes through that I.O. die. We've um, taken a lot of care in designing the package substrates and working with the motherboard manufacturers really optimize that memory layout and routing. And so I think with third gen Ryzen processors, whether it's single big DIMM per channel or whether you have two DIMM per, two DIMM per channel configurations, uh, you'll be very happy with the memory speeds and the memory overclocking you can get on third gen Ryzen. All right, definitely looking for that. We love playing with RAM, Absolutely. timings, everything. It's a totally different thing from what it is. A, it is a different, different so, animal. Totally different to first and second I spend generation. a lot of time on that. Many hours just to test some RAM. Again and again, yeah. do the settings and reboot and all. All right, next question. Let's see. Does the DirectX 11 driver optimization for single core and multi core calls going to ever improve? Um, sure, it will. Sure, it will. And I think, it, you know, the thing to keep in mind is some of the game titles that are out there, DX11 games, even some of the DX9 games, you know, what, they, what those games care about is. Um, IPC or instructions per mm -hmm. clock and effective frequency in those games and so what you'll see with third gen Ryzen is very big improvements on both of those fronts um, much better IPC much higher effective frequency in those games um, you'll see a substantial uplift in a lot of the older esports titles that'll jump 10 15 20 percent just okay. because of the improvement in IPC and single thread frequency in those game files. Right. And that's even without doing anything to the DirectX APIs for, mm. for either of those games. Right. And someone here is, is he says that the legacy drivers collide with uh, adrenaline. What's your take on that? Uh, you're going to have to be more clear about that yeah, one so with me. I'm not familiar with this one, but it looks like we have to find it out. Okay. Find out about it I, I'm, not, time. I'm not sure yeah. what that question is about specifically. Yes. I know that, mm. that we, are, we are committed to We've had an issue in the past, I will say this, um, if you rewind the clock to last year, one of the problems that we ran into is our APUs were not supported on, um, on the latest releases of the Radeon Adrenaline software. And so uh, somebody yeah. who, who might have a, a Ryzen APU and might have a Radeon graphics card couldn't always install the latest version of the Adrenaline yes, software. Yes, you had edition. two different software. You had two different one, one for the APU. I, now, I face that too. Yeah. Right. So now, you blind all that up. Anytime a Radeon software release happens, whether that's a, a Wickle release or whether that's a, a monthly update, day zero, game driver release, uh, APUs and Radeon GPUs will be supported on that same release. And so we'll, we'll make sure that you can always run the latest Radeon software on either an APU or a, a, a Radeon GPU. Right. That's, that's good news. I, I, I faced the problem when I tested the APU. It's like after I put in a, a, like a 570, 580, I had to install a totally uh, another yeah. driver. A and yeah. yeah so, so just like listening to your users, that's the same thing of AMD listening mm -hmm. to, to our fans out there. and. And hearing the frustration of people that were, you know, trapped in this situation where they couldn't have the latest driver on on their hardware because it was 
you know, this, this driver conflict. So I think that's something we've worked hard to overcome. All right. So last question, okay. which I'm also not too clear of what he's asking, is it will Navi's driver intercept, render, order, and split in multi -words, multiple ways regardless of games? I'm not sure if you guys... Yeah, I'm not too sure. Not too sure. Great question. <laughs> <laughs> I think a new clarification. We probably have to get back to this one some yeah. other. Okay. Uh, so but we come to the end. That was the last question. All so, right. Right. Um, David. Thank you. Simon. Thank, thank you to have you here. Yeah. And bye bye, guys. Bye, everybody. I hope you guys enjoyed the, this uh, QA session. Um, many thanks to EMB's people over here for taking their time to attend to your questions. All right. Bye bye. Bye. Yeah. <laughs>